सो हाय एवरीवन टुडे वी विल बी टॉकिंग अबाउट हाउ डज डॉली द टेक्स्ट टू इमेज जनरेटर वर्क सो यू ऑल मस्ट हैव हर्ड ऑफ चैट जीपीटी बाय नाउ अ रिवॉल्यूशनरी चैट बॉट लाइक यू आस्किंग इट एनी क्वेश्चन इट इज गिविंग यू एनी आंसर सो इट्स जस्ट ब्रिंगिंग द जनरेटिव मॉडलिंग द पावर ऑफ जनरेटिव मॉडलिंग टू द वर्ल्ड बट बिफोर दैट आई थिंक देर वॉज अज स्टॉम अराउंड डॉली एज वेल वेर यू आर प्रोवाइडिंग एज द टेक्सट फ्रॉम and eventually you are getting uh, the required image according to the text prompt now the interesting part was that ki whatever text prompt you provide it be it any, uh, be it any ambiguous sentence it was able to generate something so for example as you can see i tried out a human flying over a volcano completely uh, fictional uh, situation but still it is able to generate something and uh, that is pretty good the image is pretty good so uh, depending upon whatever text prompt you give it is able to generate the image so how dolly is able to do that what is the structure what is the mathematics going behind it what is the deep learning architecture going behind it we'll try to understand it today uh, so let's get started so first of all we need to understand what is multi model uh, modeling so basically any machine learning modeling problem where we have two different types of data structures uh, data uh, to handle out uh, now it can be that you have a combination in the input itself so you have an audio as well as you have the metadata for the audio uh, similarly you have an image you have a text and the output is also a text so but different types of uh, data types getting handled by the same model is called as a multi model problem so uh, considering dolly dolly is also an example of multi model uh, modeling because the input goes is a text but the output is an image so two different data types so the biggest problem with uh, multi model modeling is to how to bridge between the two modes so there would come a point where you wish to uh, switch from text to image within the model assume that it to be black uh, black box Uh, you input the text and there would come a point in the architecture where you wish to switch from text to image so doing that is difficult so now as you know dolly is a multi model uh, modeling problem so let's get started let's try to understand the architecture so uh, at a high level uh, the architecture includes of three parts one is a text encoder that encodes the text data into text embeddings uh, very easy second is a prior so it is that point where we would be converting our text embeddings into image embeddings and decoder decoder is easy uh, like using the generated image embeddings we would be generating a whole image so here you can see the uh, complete architecture uh, they we would i would be telling you everything about whatever terms that i have used a clip uh, text encoder text plus image embedding getting added diffusion prior decoder using glide uh, so let's get started i think this architecture will come back later in the post once we have explained all the things uh, that would be much more clear Uh, now talking about the text encoder first of all so uh, if you have heard of all the major breakthroughs done in the uh, side of nlp they are all related to generating meaningful uh, word embeddings beat bert beat gpt uh, beat uh, transformers the attention is the all unit paper based on transformers so all these uh, architectures coming all these techniques coming in are around improving the word embeddings only uh, so how does dolly generate this uh, text embeddings so basically it is using a model a modeling problem called as contrastive language image pre training uh, aka clip so let's understand uh, how does clip works first of all so clip is based on the idea of contrastive learning uh, so this is a word that this is a term that i have already used in while training one shot learning uh, for siemens network as well uh, so uh, here you can also there you must have heard of contrastive learning if you have read about one shot learning so it is similar to that only so contrastive learning uh, basically you know also learning row represent uh, low dimensional representation of objects by contrasting between similar and dissimilar objects so what it tries to do uh, in contrastive learning what the model tries to do is ki it tries to keep the embeddings for similar objects as close as possible and for dissimilar objects it tries to keep the embedding as far as possible and in this way other uh, training happens so let's understand how does clip actually train so we first of all take a massive data set with text plus image pairs basically an image and its description so the, uh, the these two entities form the pair now using uh, two encoder structures we would be generating text embedding and the image embedding for the respective pair now out of the whole batch that is getting fed for training so you would be feeding batches right so what uh, using contrastive learning what we will try what clip will try to do is to minimize the distance between the right match and maximize the distance with all the other possible pairs that are getting formed so the the similarity metric followed is cosine similarity you got my point right so uh, when you will be generating a, a text embedding and an image embedding 
uh, while training uh, what uh, the model will try to do is to minimize the distance between the right pair text pair uh, the text uh, description of an image and the image itself so the it will try to reduce the distance between the embeddings of these two and will try to maximize the dissimilarity between the other pairs that can be formed so if you look into this particular image so here you can see that uh, we have an image and we have a description that goes in the text encoder and here the image goes in the image encoder so we have generated images now what we are doing is that we are forming a n cross n matrix where uh, on the row side we have image embeddings and on the uh, column side we have text embeddings now here you can see the diagonal part that is getting uh, that is colored blue is the right match for each uh, text and image embedding so what the whole idea of clip is based on we will try to reduce uh, the distance or like uh, uh, reduce the distance between the embeddings between the right match and we'll try to maximize for all the other pairs so you can see the different pairs are getting formed out so uh, with the embedding of text 2 and image 1 uh, we will form a pair i1 t2 so the distance between this embedding should be very high and the distance between the correct match should be very low and then this way clip is trained now the model is generating these embeddings uh, in both the cases be it image or be it uh, text is the transformer of uh, architecture that you're using attention is all you need so that the idea of attention is also used for image embeddings also which is called as a vit model so you can go and read about it uh, also as you can see as i told you earlier only contrastive loss was a concept that we read in one shot learning you can go back in my video and check for siamese network so eventually it can also be used for one shot learning so clip can also be used for one shot learning purpose as well now uh, uh, so for now uh, in our uh, part we saw that in the text encoder part how clip was used for training both text embeddings and image embedding encoder now in the prior part uh, we would be using the idea of diffusion uh, for generating the uh, image embed for training the model to generate image embeddings so how it is getting done how it will be trained let's get started so as you saw uh, in case of text encoder uh, in the actual model we will be using just the text encoder but not the image encoder that we are generating through clip so basically clip is used for generating text embeddings only the image encoder won't be used in the actual model of dolly so what would be the use of that image encoder we will see that so we will be using that to train our prior section this prior section is based on the idea of diffusion so first of all let's understand what is diffusion so uh, if you have heard of stable diffusion model that has been very popular recently uh, i tried reading about how does diffusion work it is also a generative model uh, modeling method which have uh, whose results are comparatively better than GANs in most of the cases so that is why uh, diffusion is becoming more popular so let's understand uh, what is the core idea of diffusion we won't be jumping into the mathematics as the post would be very very long uh, so uh, diffusion uh, the whole idea goes like this you take up the training data set assume that you took an image at every timestamp t uh, you would be adding some random noise to this image this would be called as forward diffusion so uh, if you can imagine uh, you have an image uh, at t0 now after t plus 1 you added some random noise into the image deteriorating it a bit the quality gets uh, uh, reduced now uh, at t plus 2 you again added some random noise and you go on till the image is completely random noise and there's nothing that you can now identify out of that image so you got my point so you started with the correct image you started with a good quality image you started adding a uh, random noise uh, at particular stamp time stamps t such that at every timestamp t plus 1 uh, the quality has uh, is worse as compared to uh, at timestamp t makes sense now there would come a point where the image has completely uh, got destroyed now we will be reversing the whole process to get back to the original image the idea is to get the image at timestamp t minus 1 from the timestamp uh, from the image at timestamp t very easy so uh, as we uh, moved in uh, forward step we added some random noise step by step we would be reducing that noise step by step as well so gradually we regain our original image we won't be jumping into the mathematics as it is a very very complex uh, process uh, and i think it would require a completely different video for now so basically this is how diffusion models are used for generative modeling so the reverse cycle part where we are reducing the noise step by step would be used for generative modeling so that would be the part where we would be feeding random noise and eventually we would be expecting the model to output a good image uh, from the distribution over which it has been trained now coming back to dolly prior segment how are we going to use this diffusion 
uh, segment for training the prior segment. So first of all, what we would be doing is we would be taking the text embedding and corresponding image embedding. That image embedding would be coming from clips uh, image encoder. I'm talking about the training, but I'm not talking about the final architecture, right? So what you have done is now you have two embeddings that are concatenated together. The text embedding plus the image embedding that are getting both from the clip section. Now using a architecture called as decoder only transformer. So if you have a basic idea on transformer, if not, you can go to my previous video on attention is all you need and you can get the idea. How does the transformer work? Uh, so basically only the decoder part of the transformer would be considered for the diffusion cycle and we would be applying diffusion only on the image embedding, not on the text embedding present. So if you have a uh, image, uh, text plus image embedding present in this uh, whole embedding side, we won't be using the text embedding, but we would be using the image embedding on, over diffusion. And this diffusion would be able to see the text embedding as well, but it won't touch it anything. So random noise would be added only to the image embedding part. Uh, so using diffusion, we would be training this uh, complete section uh, so that we can regain an image embedding. So you got my point, right? So in case of uh, diffusion, uh, if you trace back, so there was an image, we were adding random noise to that. We were destroying it completely. Then we were reverting back to get to the original image. In case of Dolly, we would be doing the same on the image embedding, not on the text embedding. So we would be doing this on the image embedding. We would be first adding random noise to that image embedding to destroy it completely and then reverse the whole process to regain that image embedding. Uh, so in this way, uh, we would be trying to generate image embedding using the diffusion mod, uh, using the diffusion prior segment that we are going to use. So uh, while we would be uh, like in the final architecture, what would happen is key. Uh, as you saw, we were using clips embedding while training. So we won't be using that and we would be using some random noise now. So if you remember the reverse cycle, the reverse cycle uh, requires just some random noise and eventually it is able to generate some uh, uh, good quality images using diffusion as it is trained on diffusion model. So similar thing would happen here also. So uh, we would be uh, while training, we would be considering clips image embeddings also for training part. But while we would be uh, putting this model into production, we would be removing that cl uh, clip image embedding section and only text embeddings would be present at diffusion prior. So uh, and uh, this uh, text embedding would get concatenated with some random noise and the decoder only transformer would act on this random noise only to generate into a good quality image depending upon the text prompt that is pro that is concatenated with it. Uh, now coming back to the third segment of Dolly, that is the decoder part. So uh, as of now, what we have done is key, we are able to generate text embedding from using the text prompt. And then we are also able to generate an image embedding using the diffusion prior. Now third part is decoder. So in this decoder using the image embedding uh, alongside the text embeddings, we would, be con we would be generating the whole image. So the model used for this particular decoder section is called as glide. So uh, what is glide now? So there are multiple new things coming in this blog. So let's first of all discuss what is Glide. So before coming of Dolly, uh, there was a model called as Glide that was able to generate images directly from text. So uh, the whole architecture was key. It was able to, uh, first of all, using transformers, used to generate text embeddings using the text prompt, and then used to feed it to a unit, which is again trained on a diffusion uh, based model, a diffusion, uh, a diffusion idea. So as it is able to generate an image directly from the text embedding. So it now what is unit that is getting mentioned in Glide? So I think you must, if you are reading about Dali, uh, so I'm assuming you already know about unit architecture. If not, so here it is mostly an auto encoder based model, where as you move to the depth of encoder, uh, the dimension gets reduced. And as you move up in the depth of the decoder, the dimension increases, the dimension expands. So basically giving it a U shaped structure. Uh, this is why it is called as a uh, unit. Basically, you can go and read more about it. Just the base uh, intuitive idea that I've given in the blog because else the, the size of this video would go, would be enormous. Now coming back to Dolly, uh, Dali. So the only change between Dali and Glide is that uh, in Dali, we would be using image embeddings also that we have generated using the decoder only transformer in the prior section. But in case of Glide, we were not using that. So basically Dali can be called as a modified version of Glide only. So uh, now I think you have got the whole idea how it is working. So we have first of all considering text encoder from clip. Then we are training a decoder only transformer uh, using diffusion to generate image embeddings. And then using this text plus image embedding, we are trying to generate an image using glide. So glide is nothing but a unit structure that intakes the embeddings and generates the image for us. Now 
going back to the original uh, architecture just for your uh, convenience here you can see that clip uh, gives us two encoders one is text encoder the other is image encoder this is about the training section right uh, text and hyphen image pairs are the training data set now uh, using the embeddings generated by text and image we are concatenating them to the, together and using diffusion prior section we are training this prior section to so using just the text part how you can generate image embeddings also using diffusion so i think the idea of diffusion is already being explained and then the decoder comes in which uses glide glide is nothing but a unit structure basically uh, that helps us uh, to using embedding generate an image so this is the final structure that we get so uh, the text prompt is fed to the clips text encoder now this which generates a text embedding now we have a text plus random image embedding that we generate random image embedding can be anything that we would be generating now we will be feeding this random uh, this combination to the prior section uh, that has been trained using diffusion so uh, this text plus random image embedding now becomes text plus meaningful image embedding right now you are getting my whole point how what how prior is getting used now this combination the text plus image embedding is getting fed to decoder which uses glide and image is generated now so i think this is the whole structure that is getting followed and this is how dolly is able to generate images using text prompts